You can see it says service convertible top. So we go and put it in reverse. It just says basically no camera. You go to shut the passenger door and here's what happens. It's not supposed to do that. God, I'll tell you what, still goes. What's up everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary, and I have rented a car that sounded good on paper, but in practice, isn't so great. As you can tell from my surroundings, I'm no longer in Wichita. You can tell because of the tan and Pueblo style architecture that I'm in Arizona. And that means I'm visiting Jacob, but I'm also here for a family wedding of Jacob's. And that meant I needed to rent something cool because I'm not the kind of guy who'll just rent a Hyundai Accent, especially not here in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. So what I decided to do was rent this, a 2022 Chevrolet Stingray Corvette C8 convertible. And I was really excited about it because I got it from the folks at Turo. And yes, Turo, the folks who still won't sponsor me, even though this is probably my fourth video making a video about their cars. So Turo, what's up? But anyway, back to the car. So the reason I rented this is because A, I love Corvettes and B, look, it's cool. I actually fit in with the Scottsdale traffic. And so I had this whole plan about making a video about why you should always rent the coolest car you possibly can. But when I got this car, as cool as it is, well, it wasn't as advertised. And right now I'd like to take you on a quick lap around the car to show you why it's not exactly as cool as I thought it would be and why my girlfriend hates it. Starting out with the elephant in the room and what made me choose this car in the first place, as diehard of a Corvette fan as I am, I saw this one with these silly doors and I thought I had to have it. First of all, they open uh, a decent amount regularly, but as you can see from the thumbnail and from these pictures of the rental advertising, they go up and that is very tacky. I understand that, but that is what made it kind of cool and interesting because I would never do this to a Corvette, but would I rent one that had doors like this? Obviously I did. So here we are, as advertised, that works. They do go up, it is funny. Now, let's talk about the things that were not in the ad. First of all, exterior, it's a C8. These have been out for a while. They're still really cool, but if you haven't seen one, I mean, well, you're on YouTube, look them up. So this is a convertible. You can always tell because they have these kind of flying buttress uh, type design things and no clear engine cover. Now, normally I'd be able to open this up to put the top down and you can kind of see the engine. But as we go on, you'll find out why I can't do that. Now, one of the first things that caught my eye or knew that something was wrong here was A, there's a tow hook and uh, this is just a 1LT. It's not even a Z51, it's not a Z06, it's nothing special about this one. This is as base as you can get a C8, other than it being a convertible. Also, the license plate. The man I rented it from, his name is Hugo, and that's great, but for some reason, he decided to put hug a hoe on the license plate, and now I've had to drive around with my girlfriend with a car that says hug a hoe on the license plate, so that's been fun. Let's put our stuff in the trunk, right? Well, if you look, lack of better description, there's a bunch of leaves and stuff in here. And in fact, there's a pair of, I think, boxers? It doesn't matter. That's not the normal rental car experience, especially when you have a C8. Now, one thing I do appreciate is they do have the Z51 spoiler. It's in carbon fiber, you know, whatever, it's great. But let's talk about another thing here. So the other door, obviously, goes up. Dandy, right? You go to shut the passenger door, and here's what happens. Now that isn't, I, I know people make fun of GM quality, but it's not supposed to do that. So I jimmied with it for a while, and I did this more times. It's a rental, I'm allowed to. And I figured out that you actually had to squeeze the thing over here, put the latch back down, and now it'll shut. Sometimes these things don't work out the way you think they will. And when you have a girl who already doesn't really like cars that much, and now you have a door that doesn't shut, let's just say, not going great. We go to the front, the frunk, which also, fun fact, if you guys, this actually might be a new fact to C8 people. There is a button under here to open this. And I do love this about C8s. They've even chosen to make the frunk hood angular. It's kind of like an Aventador type thing. But the aftermarket parts don't stop here, folks. He's gone with an aftermarket brake fluid cap, which I gotta say I haven't seen a lot. Um, and there's some more leaves in here. I don't know if there's like a landscaping company that owns this thing or something. It doesn't matter. But I show you the storage areas for a reason. Because I packed a carry-on and a backpack. My girlfriend 
packed a large suitcase. I said, hope that fits, <laughs> knowing that Corvettes are pretty practical. But what ended up happening was it doesn't fit in the front nor the rear trunk, and we ended up, well, with this situation. So yes, the doors are silly, they don't exactly work, the trunk is dirty, and the fun doesn't stop there. Let me take you along for the inside of this car where more issues have arisen. Right. <sighs> yep, it's just like getting in a Lamborghini, except a quarter of the price and this door doesn't really work that well. Oh my gosh. All right, so now we're inside. And remember, I said it was a C8 convertible. So let's start her up and put that top down. So when you go to press the convertible button, which is this one, click it, I have my foot on the brake, I have my seatbelt on, everything. So what happens is in the dash over here, you can see it says service convertible top. So I Googled it and then I ultimately messaged the guy on Turo and I said, hey, remember how I paid extra for this to be a convertible and the main feature of the car doesn't work? He just said, yeah, it needs an update. That would have been fantastic to know before I picked it up and paid for a convertible. But again, the fun doesn't stop there. So you go drive the car, that's fine. Let's say you need to get out of a parking spot, which one would do sometimes. So we go over here, another fun C8 fact, all the knobs and gear shifties are pull levers. So we go and put it in reverse. And now I've got this symbol. <laughs> it just says basically no camera. And what you end up with, and I don't know if you can see this on this view, I can't see squat out of the rear of this thing. So this is the kind of car that you actually very much need a rear view camera in. And I don't fully believe that the rear view camera doesn't work because look, right here, we have one of those camera rear view mirrors. See, that's mirror, that's camera, which means I can kind of see, but this camera is different than the other one. So now I've got a car with silly doors, no reverse camera, and a convertible with a top that doesn't work. That's fantastic. So let's actually take this thing out for a drive. I'm gonna have Jacob in the video now. We're gonna take this thing out for a spin and see if the Corvette part of it still functions. And by that, I mean, is it still fast? Big so. safety guy, but if we get in a wreck, I'm still breaking my neck in this thing because I don't fit in these. Well, like stop I, being so huge. Well, this it's is easy. I fit in the C7. I do not fit in this. I have to slouch, otherwise I'm hitting my head on the cross yeah. member. So out on the road in the rental C8, and I would have the top down because it's a gorgeous day, but alas, I cannot. No top. Now, I think you had some trouble closing your door. I, yeah, first try was unsuccessful. Second and, try, it fixed itself somehow. And I think you'll notice, Jacob, that there was, a, it felt like there was some paint on paint contact on those doors. It, there's contact on everything contact. <laughs> That's that because be. when you put aftermarket Lamborghini doors on non-Lamborghinis, they don't line up that well. Yeah. I mean, no matter how well you put them in, uh, there's just, they just don't line up that well. And yeah. both doors have seen impact with their uh, respective front fenders. Right. And, uh, you know, there's some paint missing. How is it to drive? I mean, it is a car after all. And I will say this the car has its flaws, but as far as going forward, obviously I can't go in reverse because I can't see anything. But when you're going forward, it does drive okay. I've driven a couple of these. Uh, this is the basest one I've driven, but it does do the Corvette stuff very, very well. And namely, I mean, you know, it still makes V8 noises. It tracks decently straight, even with these weird tires and stuff like that. And when you put your foot down, it still goes. God, that it's a I little can, squirrely. I can feel yeah. it from the passenger seat. It's a little squirrelier than I'd like. Yeah, there's no reason for it to squirrel right there, but it did. And that's what happens when you put different sized tires on things. So one of the things I noticed before we started filming is you pulled up, you got Michelins on this side, probably what came on the car, standard equipment. In the rear, what are they, 305, 30, 20s. Okay, cool. Saw the car from the other side. First of all, it looks like it fills out 
the rear quarter panel quite a bit more. So I went and looked, 305 3020s. However, they're not Michelins, they're Firestones. And if there's one thing I know from owning cars, putting aftermarket wheels and tires on pretty much every one that I've ever owned, tire manufacturers sizing and specs aren't all the same from one brand to the other. So these Firestone 305 3020s are about 28 inches in diameter. Michelin 305 3020s are about 26 and three quarters inches in diameter. So a noticeable difference. Luckily, this isn't an E-diff car. If this was an E-diff car, you'd probably have even more service lights on the dash than it currently has. So that was just another thing that we noticed uh, pre-filming. Good job, Elliot, on renting an awesome Turo. Yeah, I imagine that might have something to do with it. <laughs> this bore differential Ugh. is, like I said, it, luckily, I actually can't believe it's not making noise now, but it will be soon. Well, He's look, gonna have to service it. It's an soon. Aston Martin SUV. See, we don't have those in Wichita. Yeah. It's nice. Gold brake calibers, carbon ceramic brakes. It's not a bad spec. Are they still doing a Corvette SUV? Or uh, they drop the, that? That's the rumor. Yeah, we'll and see. And when they do, I'm going to find one with Lambo doors and rent it. <laughs> have you tested to see if you have ABS? Don't know. <laughs> so I, surprisingly, I haven't slammed on the brakes in this thing because I don't trust it. Well, because the wheel speed sensors are off. <laughs> so right now we're, uh, we're heading to the Biltmore, which is where you're getting married. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic area. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, we actually uh, did this same route in a Lotus Elise. That's right. And I thought that was kind of broken. Yep. Uh, this, I mean, it takes the cake. I don't, I don't, yeah, and for it to be a 22 and already have this 22 many and it's got like so many problems. And you might wonder, well, it's probably got a lot of miles. No, I mean, 24,000, which is, I mean, a lot for one of these. Yeah. But Corvettes can go hundreds of thousands of miles mm -hmm. without problems. So something is up with this one, which brings me back to a point I've made with every Turo video. If you ever want to know how your dream car drives in the worst possible condition that it would ever be in, that's why you get one on Turo, because people drive these like they're not theirs, because they aren't. So what you end up with is a very beaten up version of whatever it is. Every Turo car I've driven that I've driven a normal version of, the Turo version of it is always more torn up. Yep. You're only going to end up with a better yeah. version unless you buy a previously right. rented car, which try and avoid at all but costs. But that being said, if you like the Turo version of your car, know this, when you actually buy one of your own, it's going to be better. Like that's actually a very positive thing there. Yeah. You'd be like, hey, I actually liked it when it was all beaten up and rented. Imagine how much I like it when it's not like that. Yep. It's not all loose and the top does work. And the things, like, you know what? I would love this car if the top worked. Again, to try to bring it back positive, there's a lot of funny things about the C8 that people don't know. Like, I do like the square steering wheel. It's very hard to knee drive with, but you shouldn't do that. It's actually pretty good. Like, I've, I've been used to thinking the base model is going to be so much worse than the other one, and it's it's really not. I mean, so <laughs> as, a, as, a, as an options snob, yeah. especially with Corvettes, while I personally wouldn't order one of the Z51, now that I've actually spent some time with one, it's not that bad. Like, I thought it would be like, you know, the version of it getting a V6 charger versus a V, you know, a Hellcat. You know, it's like, it's not that big of a difference. Yeah, I think the differential between base model C8 and like fully option C8 is probably, it's a it's a, it's a a narrower delta than yes. previous generations. And that's great, which yeah. means you can pretty much get whatever C8 you want, and you're going to have a very similar experience mm -hmm. to someone who spent 20000 more dollars on most people aren't car people. They don't know that these doors don't belong on it. Um, <laughs> no, so like we've arrived, like uh, my girlfriend and I would go to dinner and places and stuff like that. And as much as she is rolling her eyes when I open the doors, uh, I've gotten three or four people saying, whoa, nice. Yeah, Which whereas, would not have happened if the doors opened regularly. Yep. So like as cheesy as they are, people do love them. Well, also if they were on any other car... Yeah, but not mid-engine. Then true, people true, be true. like, "This one oh. looks like a supercar," so they kind of expect the doors. Yeah. To so like, if you had vertical doors on a Charger, yeah, no, the so people be like, "Oh, yeah." Boy. People don't expect like on yeah. the, people expect it because they don't know that this yeah. isn't a McLaren because they right. don't know. It's just an interesting thing that while I, as a car guy, would look at that and go, "Ugh." Yeah. <laughs> if I saw somebody get out of it, I, as with personal experience, people have been like, "Whoa, nice." What I'm going to try to do here is one of my favorite Corvette features on these is launch control because these are dual clutches and stuff like that. So I've taken the liberty to stop in the middle of traffic. God, it's still squirrelier than I'd like, but yeah. But I'll tell you what, 
still goes. It goes. It <laughs> chopped power entirely. It did before the 60 foot though. It did, but you know what? It's great to know that even the non Z51 car can launch all yep. day long. And I'll tell you what, when you do that for that brief moment in time, I forgive all of this car's crap. Yeah, <laughs> like that was fun. Yeah. As good as the PDK is and stuff like that, the two three on this cracks off. Like, listen. Oh, I didn't even do it yesterday. It was popping when it did it. And I mean, I can't show the speedometer, but believe me, in that one gear, yeah, we got going pretty fast. I now, mean, it is reminiscent of like C6, Z06. Yeah. Is this is similar power. It feels similar. Yeah, yeah, it feels very similar. Like, trust yeah. me, you're not going to get one of these and go, man, I wish this was faster. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, even I've, you know, we both have driven tremendously more powerful yeah. cars. And it's not that you go, man, I, I wish it had 300 more horsepower. This is perfect. And imagine I if you this. had both wheels not trying to force it off the road. <laughs> yeah, it would be great, uh, for, especially for the video, if every time I got on the acceleration Sucked. that I didn't have to do this, because that's the whole point of these cars, is that they're yeah. balanced and that the weight is in the rear, so it yeah. hunkers down and goes. Which this one still goes, but you have to fight it right. that much more right. than you would in a normal yeah. C8. I guess the moral of the story is I rented a car based on a thumbnail and uh, well, I got let down and I basically got in trouble with my girlfriend. <laughs> so this has been an interesting experience. Silly doors, cool car, lots of features that don't work, including the main one, which is why I paid extra for it to be a convertible. But here we are. You live and you learn and sometimes Turo, that's the name of the game. We've had a lot of fun here. I love being in Arizona. It's actually warm. It's not cold like we are in Kansas right now. And you know what? Looking at this car, it is really cool to look at. It just turns out that when you rent a car that doesn't have enough room for your girlfriend's suitcase, it's a bad trip. But <laughs> that being said, we've had some fun. It was good to have Jacob back on the channel. And that's going to do it for this particular video. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to follow me on all my social media stuff. Follow me on Instagram. Like me on Facebook. Be sure to join my Facebook group. It's a lot of fun. We post memes in there and I'm sure there's got to be a lot of memes about this thing after we get back but yes thank you guys for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe on this video it greatly helps my YouTube performance and I will see you guys on the next video all right babe you ready to go mm-hmm all right get in yep yep no it's locked oh, oh there you go oh okay great yeah that is yep good. lift her on up Oops. lift her on up up Yep. Great. That's cool. Okay, and then. Yep, you just. Look, it's easy. You got a lot more room now because it goes up. Yeah, so much. The okay. hip, though. And then we gotta put your, your bag. Do you want wheels? The bag. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, you kind of have to angle it so it can. Yep, yeah, there. Yeah. All right, let's head back. You ready? Here we are. Oh, boy. All right, hold on. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you look comfortable. So comfortable. All right, see you in a second. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> That's. <laughs> I told you this thing does that. Hold on, Jake. <laughs> Just a little manual work. All right, babe, ready? Uh huh. It'd be great if it didn't. And we're off. <laughs> okay. See, a real Corvette. Can fit probably two, three of those bags. That's okay. Yep. Big safety guy. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm still breaking my neck like the Princess Diana if we get in a wreck. Sorry, I shouldn't. Now say I can't it. use yeah. that. <laughs> Big safety guy, but I'm still breaking my neck. <laughs> well, goddamn, I was I trying to fix it. I know. I know. It was sorry. It's just funny. <laughs>